Have you seen this? Why don't you come up to my office, and I'll lock you in and show you. Welcome to Have You Seen This? The world's only podcast about obscure, overlooked, and misbegotten media. All discussions will be spoiler heavy. You have been warned. This show would not be possible without the support of our patrons. If you would like to support our show, join us at patreon.com slash have you seen this. For just $5 a month, get access to our Discord and all three episodes every month covering movies you've never heard of. Or maybe wish you hadn't. Yes, it is the movie that puts CD in CD-ROM. It's Disclosure. (laughs) (laughs) It was a sexier time. You had Microsoft and Carta. Yeah, you had the... You had Compact Presarios. Uh Uh-huh. You had the puzzle game uh, Myst. Of course. Yeah, you... One that Tim is very intimately familiar yeah. with. Intimately. You had uh, SGI Spark stations as your desktop computer just for checking email and doing video chat, which is a hell of a flex <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> Why? It sounds like it's about 1994 or so. The golden age of the internet, sure. Yeah, Oh, man, we didn't know, like, how bad it would become. Yeah, until it would just descend into the cesspool that it's become. Uh, Jen, we have a, a, another voice on our ch- on our chat here. Who is this? It's your friend and mine uh, from the very good Saucer Cinema podcast, which I have guested on before. It's Alex. Alex, thank you for coming on. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, anybody want a Prozac? <laughs> you know, I've been listening to Prozac, and it's been very. <laughs> it's that office culture, you know. That's very, uh, very laid back, very supportive. You know, they want people to to be their their whole selves in the workplace, and if that means having to uh, take the edge off with some medication, so be it. Well, you realize yeah. that the problem is that they're letting holes in the workplace. I know. First voting, and now this, <laughs> and that's why we're talking about. Michael Crichton's disclosure. Yes. Um, My- Michael Crichton, people just throwing money at him in the 90s. Absolutely. Well, y- you do one Jurassic Park and... I, and you know, yeah. really, that's all I ask. If I could just do Jurassic Park once. Yeah. I... But honestly, he had been doing it since, like, the Andromeda strain, I want to say. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that was, mm-hmm. like, a huge, uh, you know, Spielberg-level hit, but... Yeah, true. Yeah, this, um, but you know. he did have a, a proven track record of writing popular fiction, some of which translated extremely well to the big screen. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, also directing. He, uh, he also did Westworld and Looker, I think. And uh, yeah, was... and Great Train Robbery. Yeah, and there's also one where uh, Gene Simmons was a bad guy. It was a sci-fi movie, Breakaway or something. Oh, geez, I should wow. know that there's, one. There was like. It was like it was like on it used to be on cable all the time back. Was that Gene Simmons and Tom Selleck? Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Shoot, yeah, I, I'm blanking on the name. It's like it's like Robot Spiders or something in it. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember the name because it is culturally irrelevant. So I did not commit that yeah. to memory. Do we, do we have another item for the Tim movie list? Which by which of course we mean movies that only Tim remembers. I, <laughs> why not at this point? We'll put it on the list next to Black Dog starring Meatloaf. Oh, yeah, that was a great movie. Just really opened up the... Uh, it was, you know, the, the redux of, of trucking movies that uh, Gemini Man started. <laughs> yes, a titan of the genre. Yeah. But we're talking about a serious issue today, though. Mm-hmm. And that's why yeah. I've called you all here today. I would like you to watch this video about <laughs> not swatting your assistant on the ass with a folder I, <laughs> like i'm sorry but having the folder it's not a prophylactic it doesn't make it okay it's business related <laughs> like these are business files Aww. i'm using to hit my assistant on the ass <laughs> and you know if she hits you back then hey what's good for the goose etc right yeah we like to keep things chill here we, we're a family here Emph- emphasis on the goose yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It really was a different time. And the reason that we're talking about this one is that Alex had a very good idea of talking about kind of erotic, yuppie panic films 
of yeah. the late 80s and 90s. And what film was more panicked than a movie about an extremely sexy woman who lies her way to the top of the corporate ladder and then just decides to destroy a man's life because he wouldn't fuck her? Yeah, that's, <laughs> you, you can't trust an attractive woman, which is why, Jen, you and I get along so well. <laughs> yeah, have you noticed that this isn't a video podcast? There's a very good reason. Exactly. For that. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Uh, like, if I showed my face on a Zoom call, mm-hmm. I would get sued for causing people to right. talk yeah, to get a fight. Yeah, but... yeah, your company would get sued, and they would uh, wipe all your files from your your home workstation, and you'd be ruined. <laughs> But it's a, it's a big pain in the ass to get to those files, but we'll we'll get to mm-hmm. that. Um, Alex, what was your experience with this film? I think you mentioned seeing it in the theater. I did see it in the theater. Uh, I was around, let's see, came out in 90. Yeah, I was like around, literally like 12. Like that it was pretty young. Uh, it's a good age. Yeah, yeah. Sneaking yeah. into and, R-rated uh, movies. Saw- Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't as so much sneak as and like the, the this is like a dollar theater. Like they did not give a shit whatsoever who was going into what movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. my uh, my friend uh, who's unfortunately since deceased, he uh, uh, recommended. Well, I think we both rec- were like looking for something to watch. And I go, what about Disclosure? It's based on that Michael Crichton book. Yeah, uh, actually, Michael Crichton's popular. Yeah. It's got virtual reality in it. It's got you know some sexy A-listers. This should be a great movie. Yeah. Wow, this is going to be as good as Lawnmower Man. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's a high bar. I mean, <laughs> true. Yeah. We were we were expecting some titties or something. I mean, and or, yeah, uh, that's kind of like the that was kind of the pitch. You know, hey, it's it's got it's Michael Crichton. It's titties. It's uh, virtual reality. Mm-hmm. It's a, you know whatever. It's like right. It, we have nothing else to do. It's a Saturday in the middle of like <laughs> February or something. So, uh, so yeah, we went to go see it and uh, we were like riveted. We no, I'm just kidding. We were like asleep within like ten minutes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I could see that, especially at the age of twelve, when you're expecting something at least mildly sexy. And instead, yeah. it stars Michael Douglas. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah, courtroom yeah. drama with a veneer of '90s tech utopianism in it. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even courtroom drama; it's arbitration <laughs> drama. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's mediation. <laughs> I didn't know that when I, you know, paid the dollar to go see this movie, I was also agreeing to binding arbitration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so you can't sue us for making you watch our shitty yeah. movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think having now seen it twice, um, <laughs> there it's it's fine. It moves at a reasonable pace. Mm-hmm. Um, the as much as I I have a reputation for not liking Michael Douglas, he is a fine actor and a professional. Demi Moore is also very good. You also have uh, Donald Sutherland. And Dennis Miller, but don't hold that against the movie. Nobody knew how much yeah. it was start before to suck. his. Yeah, yeah, it was before his reactionary, you know, right wing heel turn. Yeah, yeah, and this was a it was before nine eleven broke him. Right, and this was a time when people were extremely concerned about the workplace environment because mm-hmm. for many years men and women had worked side by side, but. Now women had the ability to maybe ruin your life if you did certain things that you expected that you would be able to do without getting much pushback. But all of a sudden they were getting like feminism and political correctness. And to step aside, to step out of the joking for a second, uh, it is very easy to read this movie as a uh, kind of a, a backlash to a lot of the gains made by feminism in years past. But you can also read it as sort of a plea for male victims to also be taken seriously. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, that's the thing is by doing the uh, the old Reddit switcheroo on the gender roles, mm-hmm. you know, it makes you kind of reconsider a, a couple of things. Because if you're a... 
uh, if if you're a, a sexist man watching this, and it's like, well, it puts the man as the victim. You're like, well, suddenly I empathize with this character. I wouldn't like to be treated like that. Right. It's like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, which is um, sort of funny because there actually is a line where uh, Michael Douglas's wife says to him in the movie, like, you are so narcissistic. You don't even understand things until they actually happen to you, which right. is sort of funny to be like wait you can sexually harass men well that's not okay (laughs) right yeah even the very idea that it isn't you know purely like a one-sided sexual thing right but you know it's a it's a fair point because there are male victims and even if they get disbelieved for reasons that are different to the reasons that women might be disbelieved it's still a problem and it shouldn't happen so well, yes, as dealt with very deftly on a very special episode of Too Close for Comfort, <laughs> as we may recall. Be sure to listen to our bonus episode about Too Close for Comfort. But um, <laughs> before we get into the, the, you know, the political theory of it all, um, which one of you would like to take a crack at describing the plot of the film? Oh God, I, I, not me. I'm just here for all the like '90s internet nostalgia. Oh yeah. yeah, well we did we did ask you specifically for your your expertise because you did own a four thousand dollar power book at one point. Yeah, I don't know how I had that money in college. Wow. But I'm I go to the vintage computer show and now I see that on display. <laughs> it's like well, I I had a DVD ROM drive you know at my fingertips. I I had zip disks you know that cool. i could take with me and, and put on my laptop it was 100 gigs baby man, yeah i could yeah i could compute on a plane i could annoy the people around me i could watch a clockwork orange on a flight and have the the you know flight attendant tell me you know ask me very uh very politely to turn it off you know i i was living the lifestyle there tim had a very successful lemonade stand <laughs> yes that he sold crack from Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I, I learned it on the Apple II. <laughs> well, I think, um, Alex, I think you mentioned that you're, you're playing Hurt. So, Tim, do you want to maybe sum up the plot for this one? Um, it's, uh, it's a lot like uh, one of Jen's other, uh, other favorites, um, uh, Ken Russell's The Devils. Ooh. It is a guy who <laughs> is master of his domain. He's, you know, slapping his assistant on the ass. He's uh, talking <laughs> in very, uh, but blue uh, terms with his coworkers. It's a, it's a madhouse here. It's like any other startup. Um, but then, you know, this fucking woman comes in. And is like, well, you know, I want to play this game too. I'm gonna fuck whoever I feel like in the office. But he says no because he's married. Which whatever. Um, and then, you know, the, then it becomes, it becomes a whole thing. Um, <laughs> Is that is that sufficient for describing the like last two thirds of the movie? It becomes a whole thing. I think that that kind of works because it is you yeah. know there is a it is twisty just when you think that uh, Tom uh, Sanders uh, Michael Douglas's mm-hmm. character has wiggled out of his pr- out of his predicament. There is a curveball, and you're like, ooh, here goes the third act. But yeah, yes, uh, you know, which is it's fine. It's- it's your classic, you know, you think the monster's dead, but no, it pops out again. Out of- but no, she's on a Nordic track mm-hmm. and she's yes. coming for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out it's all about uh, financial malfeasance and the whole sexual thing is just, you know, icing on the cake or face. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Tim, that's very problematic. We're going to have to talk about this at the next HR meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> every time I do, I crack a joke on these episodes. You make me watch that video again from HR. Yeah, I don't even know how we have an HR department on a podcast with fewer than 100 listeners, but. That's where all our money goes, I guess. Yeah, it's obligatory. But, you know, compliance. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, I don't know. Like, maybe I'll, uh, I feel like I could talk a lot about this movie, but maybe I'll kick it to you guys. Um, okay. Alex, um, what I know what you thought about the movie when you were twelve. <laughs> it was probably <laughs> it was probably maybe not pitched to your demographic, but on revisiting it, um, what jumped out at you about it? Uh, well, well, I mean, honestly, like just a lot. I mean, just uh, just 
I always, I do like going back to movies like this because I do like seeing, like, I, I have always enjoyed like watching movies from like that just capture a different mindset and a different thing. But I, but I think what I noticed about this was that we uh, almost everything in it, like, there's some. It's like it does kind of touch back on what's going on now in some way. But it's like in it, it's like the the distant embry embryonic, uh, you know like the single cell organism version of what we have now, which is just like this monstrous, uh, I don't, I actually, this is a really tortured metaphor. I can't really, I don't know where I'm going with it. <laughs> well, I think, well, it's, you torture it as much as you want. Just don't harass it. I there mean, you go. Yeah, right, right. It's, it's, it's a limitation. No, but yeah. I think you have a point because it occurred to me watching this a second yeah. time today that yes, it, covers sort of male anxiety about women in the workplace. But yeah. it's also kind of an... One, one of the things I actually like about it is that as a portrait of kind of corporate malfeasance, yeah. it's actually pretty pointed because, yes, Demi Moore's character, Meredith, does get her comeuppance twice basically because she loses out in the in the mediation but then she's humiliated in front of the entire company by yeah. tom michael douglas which you know it's fine yeah, that's she's, her king yeah though. she's a bitch so but <laughs> you notice how there are executives in this company uh played by donald sutherland and an extremely wormy dylan baker yeah uh, that yeah. just baby baby face dylan baker dylan yes baker. that just kind of slide past yeah. this with no repercussions even though they are really deeply into some unethical shit but the yeah. idea of them getting he's, any kind yeah, of comeuppance the... is like no that's not gonna happen yeah it's yeah he's that character actor who's always like that kind of the wormy guy yeah and he's um, really loathsome in this right yeah, yeah. good for him because like right when he shows up it's when tom is coming to the office he's late he thinks he's going to get a VP position, but he's very quickly disabused of that notion by this shit-stirring asshole, Phil, yeah. played by by Dylan yeah. Baker. And it's actually pretty cleverly written the way that, that Dylan Baker's character just kind of gets him off on the wrong foot immediately. Just like, oh, hey, like, have you heard the news? It's like, what news? It's like... Oh, oh my God, like they didn't tell you? Like, wow, that's like so slimy of them. And it's like, what are you talking about? And it's. Yeah, some mean girls shit. Yeah, yeah it's, it really. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's totally, totally. It's really bitchy. Yeah, so you um, hate the guy's guts like right off the bat. And then there's the people above the fray that I think Jen is really taking issue with because I know that the movie's you know, point is about you know sexism in the workplace and manipulative people. Um, attractive people that you can't trust, like Demi Moore already. Mm -hmm. um, right. But but my takeaway from that is not about you know the the sexism and the HR part of it. Although HR are class traders, don't get me wrong. They work for the company. They they protect the company. They do not protect you. They'll fuck you every time. Right. Yeah. Not exactly. even a fun way like Demi Moore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> they they won't force you to put your cock in their mouth. They're, they're, <laughs> they're for completely different reasons, but. Um, but even more than being a venal bitch, uh, I hate Demi Moore's character because she just has the same demeanor as every other Silicon Valley venture capital grifter. Yeah. That's what I hated yeah, about her yeah. character. I mean, we're seeing like, cause she has that, that presentation, but I mean, it is the same cadence of like one of those TEDx talks, Ugh. you know, it, it could be what Elizabeth Holmes, Sam Bankman fried. It could be yeah. NFTs or crypto or AI. It's this endless hype machine just promising this, you know, utopia that it can never really realize, but she's there to line her pockets in the meantime. Like that's, yeah, I just, <laughs> that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly, yeah. that's exactly kind of like one of the, the things that like really struck me. It was like, Jesus Christ. It's like, it, uh, full disclosure, we did kind of try and do an earlier ver uh, version of this episode, but uh, there were some technical difficulties and stuff. But... It got mm -hmm. it. Yeah. My dog <laughs> ate it. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, no, but she came in and deleted all the files from Sri Lanka. That's right. Because we're telling the truth. <laughs> man. Well, yeah. well, I, well, well, I also have to explain to the audience, this, this you're not actually talking to Alex. You're talking to an AI reconstruction made from my uh, various uh, recordings. All your Reddit posts. Yeah, so all my Reddit posts. <laughs> yeah, Reddit yeah and post. your, your body my... is just like a green like wireframe. Yes, <laughs> you've uh, yeah, you've ach- achieved peak humanity. You are a brain in the jar connected to uh, connected to social media. Yeah, yeah, just like we were talking about the movie, just pure consciousness. <laughs> right. No gender, no 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 uh no race, no no it just it's pure Yeah. Just you rent, you know, a, a virtual server on an uh Amazon, you know, farm somewhere yeah. and you're just there to to compute numbers to solve Sudoku puzzles, so you know someone can uh, can mint an NFT from that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she, Al- and, sorry, go ahead, Alex, please. Oh no, though no, I just say the real Alex is uh, somewhere uh, uh, suffering on a toilet somewhere, uh, <laughs> 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 very very badly. Oh but, man! But like wearing VR goggles for some reason, yeah. I don't know. It's. <laughs> Oh no! Like it's the, I'm, it's the new hotness. Well, yeah. if we keep telling, if we keep talking about this, I'm gonna have to tell my gelato story, and nobody wants to hear that. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, that no, was no. that was a bad time. But, um, Tim, as you mentioned, Meredith being just the epitome of just soulless venture capital, to right. the point where she's yeah. pitching this utopian future where we've moved past race and gender and beyond the physical body, which is echoed at the end of the movie when she comes after Tom in that giant virtual space. But it's, it's, and I don't know how it played then, but mm -hmm. now it's just like, that sounds terrible. No, thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't you want to be free of anything that would identify you as an individual? Yeah. Yeah. Like finally. Yeah. And, the movie sort of pits her as, um, on the surface, the, I would say idea man or idea woman, but she's really not. She somehow- Idea person, Jen. Oh, well, I'm th- like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I spoke that way about yeah. a female presenting <laughs> person, she, not She is color. the hype. Yeah, she is the hype individual. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to, we're just going to read, uh, we're just going to read extracts from, uh, comedy books about political correctness that were published in the 90s. Maybe you are. I'm just going to chase my secretary around my desk. Woo! Oh, you're going all the way back to the 50s. Yeah. You're like... It's evergreen. It's evergreen hack material. We got General That's Half Track show. here and Miss Buxley. And we're talking right. about calling little people vertically challenged. But like I was saying mm. about Demi, she's not even an ideas person she's she facilitated this merger between michael douglas's company and i don't know some faceless suits but it's a big tech thing and it's going to be important i guess yeah. it's like Tim- right and again yeah. fuck a, a a successful good place to work i mean as i assume maybe only if you're a man but like <laughs> a small successful company getting merged with another one it's like they're going to can half the office like that's the f- I'm yeah. just getting mad about it. <laughs> it's yeah. not even the, the main part of the story, but I'm already like, this. you're going to fuck everything up. Don't merge with the bigger company. You're going to ruin it. Vice. <laughs> oh, yeah, seriously. God, like every this, week there's another one. It's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I was saying, like in the month since we did the first attempt at recording this, like so much has just happened that's been like just one awful tech related story after another. Just like, and just. Yeah, we want the IP, we want the, you know, content. We don't want any of the people who produce or maintain it. Right. It's like, I don't know what the sustainable plan is there, but hey, you know, you saved, you know, enough money by firing all the expensive, i.e. experienced people. Yeah. So now, you know, you can say that your PE ratio is better and it'll make line go up. But yeah, I I, I didn't even know that this movie was about sexism. I was just <laughs> mad about all the tech stuff that was going on. Yeah, all the, all the corporate <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah, it's I hate it so much. Yeah, Tim didn't even notice the the sex scene. He was just fuming <laughs> about the merger. Is that yeah. what's happening? <laughs> I'm like, you know, you know, this is gonna happen. Like this, is, they didn't even. Uh, I just, uh, I need to lie down <laughs> because to me is doing to Michael Douglas what the you know corporate merger is. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Yeah, yeah this movie is deeper than I thought, actually. Huh? Yeah. It is. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. No. Be, yeah. Be, and like I was saying, like um, she sort of represents this new future, which is sold as utopian and uh, what's the word they always mm-hmm. use these days? Agile. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. Yeah. God. Yeah. And like um, the future's female, y'all. But it's at its core empty and rapacious. And yeah, it will right, fuck yeah. you over at at every opportunity. Maybe literally just for the hell of it. <laughs> and but that's not even the point. Yeah, and this movie was covered fairly recently on uh, Karina Longworth's podcast. You must remember this. She did she did a good series about the era of the erotic thriller, mm-hmm. um, films like Basic Instinct and Showgirls and and whatnot. And generally, mm-hmm. her takes were 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 pretty good i did agree with some of them but i think she also kind of did the immediate like superficial reading where this is male anxiety battling against female power which is bad and we're going to slap it down but as you think about it and if you really analyze uh demi's character meredith you're like oh she's like a bad person and as much as I wanted to vomit watching Michael Douglas be incredibly smug, humiliating her at the end of the movie, I was like, well, you know, this was deserved. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And, and the other thing is that in, in like the, the gender swap, it isn't just, um, you know, Michael Douglas having to be the sympathetic rich white man, which, mm-hmm. you know, in most audiences, that's a tough sell. <laughs> but then also the other hand, too, where it's you know, the idea of, whether it's it's a man or a woman, it's like, well, if I was in a position of power, this is what I would do. And so you have to examine your own um, maybe you know, prejudices or um, privilege. You have to, geez, you have to check your privilege to to be like, if I was, you know, if I had power over someone else and I wanted to, you know, have them for whatever reason, like, what's to stop me? Then, you you know, you can take that step back and be like, oh, it turns out that that's not chill. Yeah. You shouldn't do that to people. Yeah. It turns out it's actually bad to victimize people, even if they are an old white dude. Um, yeah. Michael yeah. Douglas write was- write that down. Bad to victimize people. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Write it down a couple times, Tim. Um, yeah, yeah. Michael Douglas was 50 when he made this movie. Uh, Demi was about 32 or 33 on mm-hmm. very much- So both of them going head and on in years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's playing though like more like mid 40s though maybe is that kind of like the idea or is he like you could playing? say that because so. yeah. he well i don't know because and i think i asked this the last time we talked about the movie because the way that they talk about their previous relationship because tom did know meredith and they were involved enough that they actually lived together and did yeah freaky sex shit together um yeah which calls his accusations into question because he has a history yes because right. yeah. but, uh, uh, oddly enough like real life michael douglas he had a reputation as a ladies man yeah mm-hmm. and uh she's very sexually aggressive and they had like a very active freaky sex life so but i remember thinking watching the movie i was like wait a minute because like he's got kids and a wife, his kids are like what, like seven yeah, or eight? Tweens. Yeah, mm-hmm. like like okay, sure, yeah. Like the the little girl seems to be like eight or nine. The kid, the other, the uh, son seems to be like about five or six. Or yeah. Something. Oh yeah, because the the little girl is reading his email at the opening yeah. opening of the movie. His yeah. electronic mail. It was cutting edge. Yeah, and this was this was better. Like it had, uh, you, you could like browse microfiche through it yeah <laughs> um yeah it was there's like a nice much, cool little animation that's like really slick looking too yeah instead of just like a is it yeah it's, <laughs> it's gonna sound ridiculous but i would actually love to be able to browse microfiche from my computer that would be oh, totally. hella useful for the show <laughs> yeah yeah also yeah, I'll, it's got also it'd be like to be it's like you know you could you could reenact like you can feel like you're in one of those old movies, like, oh, I'm looking over old microfiche and learning about the, the history of the, the killer I'm after or whatever. Yeah, I can yeah, pretend I'm in... Find um, all these pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. I can pretend I'm in uh, Behind the Mask. Exactly. <laughs> you can pre- yeah, you can pretend you're playing a game of Call of Cthulhu with some very choice handouts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but yeah, it's uh, it's got... It, it identifies spam, it has aim, it has video chat. Like, of course, you need a powerful, you know 
a silicon graphics computer to, to do all this amazing stuff like send text over a phone line yeah <laughs> also a high speed internet for those video chats yeah right yeah, yeah. voice over ip i, I th- wow. yeah i think they was compressed with real player oh god remember real player <laughs> that oh, was god. fun <laughs> now that is a name i've not heard in any long, long yeah there's your generational trauma well you haven't heard it in a long time because it's still buffering <laughs> ah. Oh, <laughs> damn. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so Michael Douglas's character is like, he still seems like older than Demi, and she seems like yeah, for her sure. age, 32, 33. I think mm-hmm. they say it in the movie. Yeah, she was, she was pretty much exactly the age she was in real life. Yeah, and it's an interesting flip where, and God, like, am I going to start sounding like... I don't know what I'm going to start sounding like now, but just em- embrace your your cronehood, Jen. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking about I'm not talking about that hideously old and decrepit Demi Moore in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm oh, talking yeah. about oh, yeah. how the camera the, hates her. God, <laughs> right. why didn't she clear her throat before talking? Oh, that, that raspy voice. She really did prefigure Elizabeth Holmes. Same same grift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it turns out it's all vaporware anyway, because she actually doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah. Um, right. But the point I was going to make is that it's an interesting flip on where you would expect, much as he does, like Tom expects to get the v- the VP position, but because, because of woke, they have to give it to a woman. Yeah. <laughs> like a young, yeah. hot woman. And there's a point later in the film where I think he's he's talking to his wife or something, but he's he. Oh, yeah. It's when they're arguing and he says to her, sexual harassment is about power. When did I have the power? Like expressly uh... <laughs> inverting the whole like, yeah. traditional dynamic between like a man and a woman in the workplace. Like he. Right. Which is. Yeah, she was his boss. He, d- he didn't get the. Uh, the leg up. Yes. So to speak. But you got a leg over her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get the uh, leg over the shoulder. <laughs> she tried it. Yeah, he did. She really tried yeah. it. Mm. But I don't know. Like, how do we feel about that kind of power dynamic inversion? Because it's still, there. there still is this, I don't want to say disparity between like a man and a woman, but you know, he probably, he does throw her to the ground at one point, but he can't just beat the shit out of her because <laughs> right, that's, right. that's not going to be good Yeah, yeah. for you, a lot of reasons. You can't hit a woman anymore. That's so fucked up. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I don't know. Like, Tim, has this ever happened to you? Uh, Well, I, I mean, after the settlement, I signed an NDA, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no, well, I'll have to respect that. Sad. Yes. We uh, not, I, I, HR put me up to it. It's the binding arbitration, the real villain. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened to you, Tim. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> Don't get me started on that lawyer during that that big arbitration, those arbitration scenes. That 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 that. They, the, well, speaking the of uh, speaking of. Oh yeah, that guy's great. He's a great sleaze. Yeah, because yeah, you and, just hate his guts immediately. Exactly. Yeah, and and I know Jen uh, jokes about woke. Which we like to do on this podcast, but the the casting and a lot of the way that the um, arcs resolve themselves is very even handed. It's you know we have the the bad lawyer is just some like you know schlubby white guy, so you're like oh I don't like him, and then the defense attorney is the is the sassy Latina. She's like a Gloria Allred kind of. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's and like there are even more you know inversions in the story. Like even during like the the binding arbitration, you know, not quite court, you know, cross examination scenes, where it's you know, it is uh, you know, his defense, and it is um, you know whoever the 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 woman that's deciding this. But it's like you know you realize that we're two women talking about what men can do with their bodies, and so it's just like Oop. elbowing the viewer, being like. You see a, a different perspective, huh? Like, can I help you along with this? <laughs> so, <laughs> this movie was produced by the Good Men Project, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh-huh. No, unfortunately, it was uh, it was 
uh, written by, well, there was a different screenwriter, but the book was from noted reactionary Michael Crichton. I haven't read the book because I have already graduated from the seventh grade. Um, <laughs> well, what if you're on like a long flight or you have a layover? Oh, God. I, you know, I'll probably just read the Sky Mall catalog. You've moved on to Dan Brown. I get it. <laughs> You've matured. Yeah. I'll say this. I could at least read Crichton, even though he's not uh -huh. like a brilliant prose stylist or anything. Like reading, I remember picking up a Dan Brown book in a bookstore and looking at a page of it and just being like, God, I feel stupider just looking at this. Yeah. People read my, this shit. My, my mom used to work at a bookstore when that, uh, and when that came out, she said, Alex, you got to read this. They're, they're really putting a lot of promotion behind this. I read it literally like in three hours and it was like, <laughs> like I'm talking about the Da Vinci Code. I mean, it is like yeah. I read it like three, or I like maybe four hours. I don't know. It was not a long read. Just kind of burn through it. Yeah, yeah. And, it's not a challenge. I mean, it, it's very easy to read. But I was like, I was trying to see. I was just trying to figure out. Okay, what's the hook here? It's it's got to be like a Holy Blood Girly Grail thing, right? And I was like waiting for it. Waiting for it. okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was pretty much. <laughs> I, I I could tell exactly what the the, the whole thing. Was. I mean, I, it sounds smug, but like it just it was just like. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I absolutely the, believe the you. To catch up with the reader. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's like uh, at that yeah. level. Yeah, I could just well, see where it was going. And it's not just like it's not just disclosure. Which, given that the book and the movie were released in the same year, you know that yeah. Mike Crichton was banging this out for a paycheck. He wasn't putting you know all the 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 nuance or craft that he put into say a Westworld into this one. This was him writing for a paycheck. Yeah. But point. this and Jurassic Park and Westworld, I feel like they are all at a particular sort of I fucking love science level oh, yeah. of like science literacy where it's like, I, I like science enough, but not enough to do any of the boring lab work that goes with it that people actually really hate. I just like the cool discoveries and the like kind of wide-eyed futurism neat, part of it gadgets basically yeah, yeah yeah it's like i like the idea of cloning dinosaurs i don't like the idea of having to like memorize multi-syllable protein chains right and finding out like what ways that they interact in you know in working in a laboratory just in the hopes that yeah. i might find some like significant change in like the chemicals that I added to this thing. It's like, that's, that's the, the science that no one loves. It's, yeah. it's the dinosaurs walking around that people like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, this, uh, well, I think, because Michael Crichton sees, he has basically like a couple of different books that are basically the same. But I mean, what I mean is like the same type of book, like three types of books, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. He has the, the classic techno thriller. There's some kind of, you know, Sphere, Jurassic Park, Drawn to Strain, Congo. There's some kind of like, it's basically, I mean, basically the science, it's science, yeah, like like you said, basically science fiction for people who, it's for dumb. Yeah, it's pop science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, then, you, then you have like these things that are, but like, he also was pretty enamored with corporations and corporate intrigue and politics. So like you, you, you get that rising sun. So this is more like in the rising sun mm -hmm. vein. Um, except, well, maybe not quite as racist as that book. Which is, <laughs> well, yeah, that... literally could have could have been like you know, like uh, World War Two era propaganda, Yellow Peril propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> it is like one of the most incredibly racist books you've ever read. I don't know. It's 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 quite something. It's disclosure, but like instead of a woman, it's someone who's Japanese. Right, right. And there, but <laughs> the thing is, even in that book, yeah. which is basically just a murder mystery. But a corporate uh -huh. intrigue murder mystery. There is a tech. There is a huge every like. It doesn't matter what story he does. He will sneak some kind of like new fangled technology in there, or you know. Yeah, yeah. Like in Congo, they had like a satellite link up. Just like holy shit, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, the book Congo with uh, Congo is interesting too because like there uh, there was like a. If I remember correctly, I, had, I mean, I have literally haven't read it in decades, but I remember mm -hmm. this sticking out was that there was, okay, you know, the book was written like what, 80, 81 or something. And he's talking about like how, like a world, how, I, how impossible it would be to make a, a worldwide computer network. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I mean, just like think of like all the cable that you'd need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just like the idea that like it was just kind of funny because he's just describing the internet, but it's like nah, that probably never happened actually. <laughs> well, yeah, cause, because I mean, ha- what would happen when you turn off your computer at the end of the day? <laughs> Where does it go? Like, right. Yeah. It's suddenly, yeah. What's the the website's business hours? It's like a kid with uh, playing peekaboo. You know, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's, now you see, now you don't. Yeah. So, and in, in, in disclosure, he injects into his, you know, corporate intrigue thriller, virtual reality. Yes. In in a way that virtual reality has uh, never been able to live up to. No. <laughs> right. Well, we've covered a number of virtual reality related films on this show. And one of these days, like, it's going to it's going to hit. I know it. <laughs> You kind of, you took the words right out of my mouth, Tim. Actually, because a lot of these films are kind of breathlessly on the cusp of this amazing new technology, and like you know, well, any day now you're going to be just like Peter Gabriel in the Kiss That Frog video. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> and oh, man. it turns out that nobody wants to do that or be it. Nobody cared about the metaverse. Like 300 people used it. Right. Right. Well, that's only like. A hundred million dollars a person, so it's really not that bad. <laughs> yeah. And like I think we talked about this in our Johnny Mnemonic episode. And I thought of it watching... Another movie I another movie I saw with the same friend, by the way. Around. Oh wow. What did you Within... think of that one? Just real quick. Oh, I th- I think we like that a lot more. <laughs> it was definitely okay, it was yeah. definitely more up our alley, I think. <laughs> it... Yeah, more geared to the twelve year old. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually that's a perfect movie to watch when you're twelve. Oh, totally. I mean, I had no idea what was going on in it, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not much. Yeah, you're gonna go out. The answer. You're gonna go out and buy a copy of Cyberpunk Red after that, and play it wrong for a few years until you go to college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a guy who knows, folks. But um, oh yeah. <laughs> like I was saying, um, Johnny Mnemonic had this scene of Keanu dialing to talk to somebody across the world or something with some kind of virtual interface where he's like, uh, yeah, he's, you know, typing in the air and he's, yeah, it's like, imagine a network where computers call each other. Right. And (laughs) we made fun of it in the episode because, and it's maybe unfair to be mean to in this way to a movie from 1995, but in, 2024 it looks incredibly stupid because it's like oh yeah like because that's what i want to do when i log on to skype is like i want to like dial a phone yeah Yeah. (laughs) make it with more steps and it requires like you know a two thousand dollar rig for me to to accomplish this task that i could otherwise just say you know hey comma siri call call jen yeah and it's kind of call jen (laughs) it's kind of the same thing in this movie where Tom has to try to track down the files that are going to exonerate him only to discover that Meredith is in the system and she's deleting yeah. them as he's looking for them. What the company has created is basically like a huge hall or museum or something. A cathedral. Yeah, that yeah. you walk a into. A testament to knowledge. And yeah. there are high so, places you could almost guess- fall off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like all these MC yeah. Asher Inception yeah, shifting. Hall of Alexan- yeah, Library of Alexandria by MC Asher. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, which would be cool if that was an experience they were prepared for. But when you're just trying to find a video file, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they, they, they set that they set that whole thing up as like, okay, this is just a tech demo, just to show the potential virtual reality. But it's like, why they hook up all the actual files of the company into this tech demo? Yeah, and then it's like, oops, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> right. We almost saw your social security number, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A fatal huh? case of dog food. Yeah, yeah, just just put a bunch of fake. Just put a bunch of fake. It doesn't. If you're just trying to demonstrate the, it's just you don't need to put the actual information there. Yeah, so by analogy, it would be like any time that like I want to find a PDF or something, like I got to play Doom first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Totally>. Sick. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Well, I th well, I think this thing definitely will pass the. You can play Doom on it test. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, I think I think they actually just took like somebody's like really crazy like modded like Doom level and were yeah. Like, yeah, you know, fuck it, mm -hmm. we'll use this for the virtual reality. But I gotta say, spending all this time talking about '90s tech has left me very thirsty, Tim. Oh, it has. Has it? Yeah, do you know what I could do about that? Well, you could drink a glass of water, you know, like just a plain old boring, stupid glass of water like you're a poor person. God, what do, what or, do I look like to you, Tim? What the fuck I, do I look you, like to you? <laughs> okay, you look like you have 1990s tech startup Seattle Microsoft life or fuck you money. You're going to want something a little better than that. And I... I suggest to you Liquid IV, which is fueling life's adventures. It is real people with real flavor that you drink. No, it's real hydration. Yeah, better yet, proper functional hydration, which is essential. And Liquid yes. IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. Their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. Yeah, you, you don't even know what you're missing out on by not drinking Liquid IV in your water. Yeah. Motherfucker, I muted the iPad. What the <laughs> fuck is your problem? I think it's thirsty, Tim. You should pour a glass of liquid IV on it. I, You know, I think I'm going to. I'm going to submerge it in liquid IV after this. Yeah, and you know what? You can submerge it in at least 12 different flavors, like sea berry, strawberry lemonade, concord grape, lemon lime, pina colada, tropical punch, watermelon, strawberry, passion fruit, guava, even acai berry. Since I know That's that you're a tech berry. asshole. Yeah. Like, I know you love those bowls, <laughs> and I know you're going to want have those... a glass of liquid IV yeah. with one of those bowls. They have that in the break room, and all you have to do is just get slapped on the ass by HR to get some. Which, you know, that can bring down your day a little, but you know what will bring your mood up is the convenient packaging. Because all you have to do is take one stick and add it to a glass of water, and you mm. are hydrating two times faster than with water alone. Man, how do we put up with water this whole time? It's a losing proposition. The technology yeah. was there. We're sitting around drinking plain water like a fucking dog out of a toilet bowl. Right, yeah. And here comes <laughs> Meredith with her smoky voice to tell you, drink liquid IV <laughs> right out of, r drink it off my tits. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you know, if that won't motivate our audience, I don't know what will, but. I don't, I don't know either, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as we said, one stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. I know I said that already, but I kind of Because water it. is stupid. Yeah, yes. water is lame and dumb and you, you don't want to It's weak, it. yeah. Yeah. So get some flavor in your water and you're not only getting flavor, you're also getting five essential vitamins. B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. And they didn't even have this in the 90s, so... You're already ahead of the game. Yeah, I think they were only up to like B vitamin B4 at that point. Yeah, it was still in beta. Yeah, they hadn't rolled it out. Yeah, yet. like they didn't they didn't even discover B12 until like the 2000s. Yeah, it's it's non-GMO, which again, if you're in a tech startup, I know it's important to you. It's free from gluten, so if you have any allergies or and there's no dairy and there's no soy in it, so you can take it to your venture capitalist retreat and put it in everyone's water and then they'll give you $50 million to push out a product that doesn't actually work. Yeah, and when you're at your retreat drinking out of your, your liquid IV out of your Stanley Cup, you can tell mm -hmm. people that liquid IV believes in equitable access to clean and abundant water because that's the foundation of a healthier world. To date, liquid IV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 countries around the world. So, so beat that. Silicon Valley. Yeah, step up. Yeah, I would not drink a glass of silicon. <laughs> I mean, you could try it. I No, I would. I, I couldn't. I refuse to. Tim, if I offered you this stick of liquid IV and this packet of powdered silicon, which are you going to put into your drink? Well, it's got to be the liquid IV. Hey, that's what I like to hear. And that's real yes. people, real flavor, real hydrating. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HISTPOD, that's H-Y-S-T-P-O-D, name of the show, at checkout. Oh, like us. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code H-Y-S-T-P-O-D at liquidiv.com. 
And we're going to keep doing these until we get one sale. Yeah, you motherfuckers. Well, one of you at least <laughs> click on it. Like, just once. Like, come on. We are sweating here. Yeah. Fortunately, uh, we're hydrating well, at the same time. <laughs> right. Well, you know, we make it up in volume. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, I really need IV. a drink. I'm putting liquid IV right. in this bottle of Sailor Jerry right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it hydrates you twice as fast as regular Sailor Jerry. <laughs> Ah, oh, good to know. Uh, good health tip mm-hmm. for everyone. Thanks, Egon. Um, okay, so where were right. we in disclosure? I think we were talking about Doom. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're disclosing many a thing. <laughs> uh, oh, we're right. The virtual reality thing, yeah. Yeah, and how it's definitely totally going to take hold this time by making you uh, have to jump through a lot more hoops to pay more money for more high-tech equipment to do things that you could already just do on your phone or for free. <laughs> Sounds great. So, Sign me the fuck up. I've got $3,000 right, yeah, here would... just burning hole in my pocket. Give me a headset Ooh, that'll well, give me an immediate headache. Well, if you had another 500 I would sell one to you from Apple. Oh, damn. <laughs> I've got to have those Apple yeah, products. Maybe, yeah, maybe you could get an employee discount. <laughs> um, <laughs> present discount. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, like, it's funny that... There were so many of these films very earnestly pushing virtual reality in the 90s. And yeah. now here we are, um, X number of years later. I can't do math. It really hasn't happened. Yeah. I mean, in, in 10 years, I'll try again. Don't worry. No, they're it's, still, it's like they're still trying message. to push it, though. Like, Apple just came out with their thing, you know? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, I'll leave that to a different podcast to, to weigh in on that. Yeah. <laughs> but... Apparently, it's giving people like uh, burst blood vessels or something like that. Or cool. Oh well, it's yeah. because they're they're trying to change your brainwave parameters, like Job and Lawnmower Man. That's, <laughs> they shouldn't. They're have, trying to. They shouldn't have played that serial killer simulation where you get strangled and like the blood vessels in your eye burst. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's uh. Was it um? Ah, oh, jeez, the New Year's movie. Strange days. Strange days, yeah. Ooh, Strange yeah. days. Oh shit. That's a yeah. pretty good yeah, movie. I like that movie. Burst more than a yeah. blood vessel. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, okay. That's VR portrayed accurately then. I don't know. It's no, well, <laughs> us- using mini discs to imagine yourself running on the beach. Yeah, there you go. It's well, kind yeah. of more like like every new technology that comes out, like the second the question that's immediately asked about it is like, how can I use this to fuck? And that's certainly true in uh, Strange Days. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's it's a very humanistic uh, approach to it. Part of the problem of a lot of this VR talk is that it's used in in movies, and we forget that like movies are a visual medium to um, portray things to a stupid audience. Um, but if you actually do these things in real life, they're actually much more mundane and not so cinematic. Yeah. So like when in the end, when um, you know Michael Douglas has to use actually actually use his companies shitty vr rig to go into a file system basically <laughs> and he's on like they got like the 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 blue lasers and like the trampoline and the headset and the gloves and yeah. everything where it's like okay like in a movie you're like oh this is all really interesting all these these gadgets like you're talking about that you have to use in order to do this simple task but in your day-to-day life you like you don't have that kind of uh i don't know that, that kind of time to, to just go through this whole rigmarole of like well you know, let me open my email, right? Let me get on the trampoline. I'll put on the uh, <laughs> bodysuit. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> I don't have time for this bullshit. Yeah. It is at least accurate. It is at least accurate that he looks very silly using it. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. And it's yeah. presented in the movie as sort of a, like not a product that they're intending to come out with, unlike the CD-ROM drive that, Michael Douglas's department is is working on. It's more of like a, a proof of concept. And I think demo. it's in, yeah. 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 It's intended like a to get C D ROM drive. Wild. Yeah, <laughs> it's in it's intended to get the people they're merging with excited about the possibilities of like blah blah. Which again in twenty twenty four is like very funny because it's like like Tim said, it's like they're just gonna lay off half of you anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're <laughs> we're coming out with a product that is not viable, but it'll get all the like dumb like C suite MBA 
jagoffs excited about the possibilities of your company by talking about transhumanism oh, and also, oh. all this other shit that, like they don't know anything about right. because they went to business school which is not real school yeah um and then yeah that's a, enough to like boost your valuations and then it's this whole house of cards that you keep propped up long enough to cash out and then you know you can just let uh reddit burn after its ipo who gives a fuck i'm moving on to the next one yeah, but you're saying. Oh, okay. Well, no, that just reminded me. I, I just saw this. I don't remember. Uh, just like a few hours ago, Tyler Perry, of all people, <laughs> it, the auteur. Yes. yes, the auteur is. Uh, he was like talking about building another because you know he's a you know he's based in Atlanta. His is I think his studio makes a lot of money for the area or, or something. Mm-hmm. He's a he's going. Mm-hmm. He was going apparently going to build an expansion of the studio or something, but then he saw. The, uh, the like the 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 uh, the a the new the latest AI uh, we could just generate a movie with some words uh, high pole balloon mm. and so he's saying and apparently he's he's rethinking his strategy now or something like that I was just like <laughs> oh, God and Tyler Perry's like that that's about on my level yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like he either doesn't want to pay anybody or he is really that dumb I don't know Pro- either or maybe or both I don't know. Yeah, I'm stunned maybe that one, maybe one, maybe both. I'm yeah. stunned that he doesn't actually have this deep and abiding passion for the medium in which he has made his fortune. <laughs> right, that's yeah. shocking. To it's me. just a means to an end. Yeah, it's yeah. no way and no way evident by the actual movies he's made. <laughs> right. I, I I went to, I remember one time I I flipped on a, one of those uh, Medea movies like on on, uh, on TV at one point. I don't remember when this was, but it was like. It, like it was almost comical the cutting the cutting and the blocking it was just so amateurish and it was just yeah so only someone that artless could see a vr or a, a an ai generated movie and be like oh yeah this looks just like uh top notch like <laughs> this is this is the same level of artistry that i bring to my work it's like you dumb man <laughs> i remember the first time i saw a trailer for a tyler perry movie i think it was diary of a mad black woman but i'm not sure but i literally thought that it was a parody of like lifetime movies (laughs) it's a fine line isn't it yeah because it it looked so artificial and corny that i was like oh wow okay this is really different and like they're playing it completely straight and then by the end of the trailer i was like oh no they're playing it completely straight (laughs) right yeah that's the problem jen i think you're one of those uh uh calls cultural uh, coastal elites who actually like understands movies and knows what's good and bad rather than just you know just shoveling whatever slop into your gullet that comes across well on i'm your tv screen i'm gonna give that up because apparently all movies are gonna be created by mid-journey now so why yeah. bother <laughs> okay. well all all movies will then be mid won't they yes yeah, i was like thinking that well, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. it's, also, it's right in the name also i was like thinking you could do like a really funny like intentionally bad cover band just like make it mid journey <laughs> now some rock and roll enthusiasts would argue that journey were already mid well, uh, yeah, I mean, you and know. they would be incorrect yeah. yes some of you may disagree but um, well, i think that anyone who like heard you know what separate ways coming on the radio would disagree well next episode we're going to be talking about boston so Oh, for really? now, there's a mid band. Is, is that what the song is called? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I have I kind of have a soft spot for Boston. I'll say that. All right. I like but, Boston. There, there. It's it's really fun to try to sing like Brad Delp on uh, on yeah. Uh, Guitar Hero. Yeah, I no, can't. I, but it's fun to try. Yeah, no, it's just something about the guitar tone. I just oh like, yeah. It's just very. It's just kind of comforting sound to me. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of mm. um, extinct technologies radio but um, yeah <laughs> back to seattle and the fraught the, world of the one medium that hasn't really truly been given over to spam if you think about it oh yeah that's true oh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, something to think about yeah it's, the spirit of radio lives on q rush yeah. <laughs> Invisible airwaves, etc. But uh, yeah, no, there's your mid prog. <laughs> so the the tech world of disclosure in the '90s was optimistic. It in this year it seems bleak. What about yes. what about the gender relations 
in this movie, which are spicy. Yeah, yeah. It's it definitely it might I don't know. It, I, I always for you always think because the nineties were were the age of like, oh, everything's politically correct now, but then you're like realizing, well, I mean <laughs> Yeah. Which but, is why uh, it was so crazy when well, it's just been and now it's just everything is woke, but it's the same exact yeah. exact thing. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm what I'm getting at because like I was alive during the 90s, growing up in kind of a conservative household, so I was exposed to all this hand wringing about political correctness and whatnot, which is like whatever. And then you fast forward like 25, 30 years, and suddenly people are screaming about woke, and I'm like, my God, this is just the same shit, like exactly over again. And it's kind of like um, there's a there's a guy called Cliff Nesteroff who is an expert on the history of comedy. He's written a, a few books about it, which are very good. And uh, he posts on Instagram and Tumblr a lot of vintage material. And one of the things that he's always digging up is people objecting to offensive material on the screen, whether TV or movies. Mm -hmm. And... People like to say, like, oh, well, you can't do anything now because of political correctness. It's like, no, there were always people pointing out what they perceived as injustices or maybe treatment of characters that was racist or sexist or whatever. You know, let's not forget Birth of a Nation. People got very mad about Birth of a Nation, and they were right because it ended up reviving the Ku Klux Klan in the 20s. Yeah. So, Oof. um, yeah, oh, yeah, but, but, uh, all, it's like all those whiners about <laughs> trying for the will and all that, you know, like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it people, it's so bizarre as you get older, you you're like, do we have like no real collective memory whatsoever? Because you see people just get mad at getting mad about the same shit they were mad about in the nineties. It, it is kind of funny how that happens. It is like literally, you could, it's like psych, it's so cyclical. It's like kind of hilarious. Like even the same crap that they're, even the same empty bullshit that they're hyping is, is, is just a new version of the same old shit. Like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the, the culture war never ended. No, it never did. It's, you know, it's just all that has happened before will happen again. Yeah. Uh, same old yeah. dumb bullshit. Hopefully not disclosure, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Do we need another one of those? Well, no, like, no. I've... If, if the disclosure was made now, it would be like uh, a, a, a prestige mini limited series or something like that. It wouldn't. You know, be if like this that. were on Max, I would actually be curious to watch it. You know, yeah. the terrible thing is you talk about like political correctness, but like if this had aired on like Apple, whatever plus, like on their service, yeah. it would be so like so toothless and anodyne it would yeah. suck like it, yeah it, it would yeah. be like resolved in the first act be like oh well she, well she's fired then yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> well michael douglas's character wouldn't actually be like really involved with his children the way he is in in disclosure because the movie opens mm -hmm. with uh him and his wife rushing to get themselves and their kids like out of the house because they all got busy days um but he's obviously a very hands-on dad Mm -hmm. If it were, whereas Meredith is a hands-on executive, Arr. woo, woo, and how? But um, <laughs> if it were Apple TV Plus, it would he would just be a clod, and she and his wife would be doing everything, and you know she'd... that I think that if Apple TV made this, Michael Douglas would be in the wrong, and he would have deserved it, and he would have like lost his job or gone to jail or something at the end of it, and he'd be like. Slay Queen. Just like that's how <laughs> that's how smooth brain so much of Apple TV Plus stuff is. It wouldn't surprise me to see like a, a write up in the Hollywood Reporter that's like we're doing a reimagining of the Michael Crichton classic Disclosure, but mm -hmm. it's time that we realize that real wrong was done to Demi Moore's character in the film. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because... How about a twist where it's a woman getting sexually? Yeah, harassed? yeah, that was what I was about to say. They would just like do it. They would just like do reverse the original premise to make it just like yeah, 
<laughs> like, here's a thing you already know. We're just telling it back to you. Like, oh, thank you for giving me exactly what I wanted. Yeah. This doesn't challenge me at all. And again, because people, we have no, like, cultural memory or anything. We just be like, wow, that actually happens to women in the workplace? <laughs> yeah. What? You think someone would have mentioned it? I don't this know. Is a, you think somebody would have at least made a hashtag about it? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this one is... Yeah, I, don't, I don't go on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little weird in that it kind of... And I don't know if it's just Karina Longworth doing this. And I think, it's, I think it's fair to kind of slot this in with erotic thrillers of the 90s. It's not exactly a Joe Esterhaus kind of story. It doesn't have that... Mm. Uh, it's not as sleazy as I would have liked. Not as campy, yeah, not as it. sleazy... Um, this was directed by Barry Levinson, interestingly yeah. enough. So my my man bounced back after toys. So you know, good for him. <laughs> yes. Um, it's much more polite <laughs> than than uh, those kind of Joe Esterhaus yeah, films that, that made like a bazillion dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would maybe put it kind of between the Joe Esterhaus stuff and something like Jade. Directed by William Friedkin, because honestly, Jade is like a little bit boring, <laughs> and this movie's kind of okay, boring yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but the thing about Disclosure is that it's not precisely erotic, even though it does have like a sort of a abortive sex scene, which I don't know how I don't know how you folks feel about it, but. In spite of my dislike of Michael Douglas, I do think it's like a genuinely well put together and like kind of hot scene, depending on how you feel about uh, dubious and non con. So like, well, that's that's the thing is that if they're presenting um, Demi Moore as the antagonist and it's like, tell me that you wouldn't hit that. Like, tell me honestly. <laughs> Because it's like, yes, absolutely. And like that creates the conflict. Like, you know, if it was like, yeah. I don't know, um, if, if it was uh, uh, like Madeline Albright or something, <laughs> then he'd be like, oh, well, obviously the guy, you know, she he's been coerced. He wouldn't want that. Um, or, um, oh, geez, what's a, what's that? Oh, fuck. Not Feinstein because she's dead. Oh, bro, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hit that. Like a ton of bricks? No, I I would push it down a flight of stairs, maybe. <laughs> and her suffering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, but she's, like, she's, she's but I mean, like, on, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. But if you talk about, you know, it isn't about sex but power. It's like if if that if it wasn't Demi Moore, but if it was like Nancy Pelosi, like that's an open and shut case. But that's what the movie does, where it's like you tell me that you that Demi Moore, like you know, was grinding on you. <laughs> And is like, no, I got to go home and like, go talk to my, you know, bat, you know, boring, um, just kind of sniping wife. Yeah. Cool. And I mean, it is smart from a sort of screenwriting perspective because, it, yeah, it has to be like what would normally be like a slam dunk, where like this yeah. woman right. who is described as a nine out of ten in the movie is like. All over. Which what the fuck is a ten? Well, well, is it like well, an, he, he's, is, he, it, is that like an archangel? Well, he, he's being he's clearly being nice. Just to, he's being nice to his wife by saying that because oh you know, right yeah. in that scene I, I noticed that today it was like he he was he what he he wanted to say ten yeah 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 okay and I gotta yeah. give I I gotta give Demi more credit she looks amazing in this movie she looks great yeah. she's it's, fabulous it's kind of a yeah kind of a Clark Griswold dodge the the one in the Ferrari no she's ugly yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> although um I think and I believe Matt Chrisman agreed with me when he came on the show to talk about nothing but trouble for for me peak hot Demi is in the otherwise execrable nothing but trouble. Mm-hmm. She looks oh, yeah. damn good I mean, in that movie. The short hair. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, why fight? We could go into virtual reality and have the two characters fight each other for my enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that that's what Dennis Miller's department was actually working on. <laughs> and and I know, you know, we already said our piece about Dennis Miller, but I like his character in this because, like, 
he's he's like the dirty nerd, like the really inappropriate one before we got like the like gelding Sheldon uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, like version of like you know, the Big Bang Theory nerd, where it's like, uh, oh, the Star Wars references. It's like, let me say something wildly inappropriate. Yeah. And that is why I'm not rising above the level of, like, you know, senior technician or something. Yeah. It's like, you, you put people off, man. Yeah. yeah, you're actually very unpleasant to be around. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Dennis Miller. But, um... Right. No, no, I saw something really funny on 4chan. Let me tell <laughs> you. It. Like... Oh, God. <laughs> like <laughs> It was a company wide teleconference. Like why why that day of all days? Yes. <laughs> but um bleh, like man, we're talking about Demi and you guys and Tim, you start talking about Dennis Miller. It's like you just poured cold water on me, man. <laughs> but um right, the 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 like I was saying, I think it 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 really does have to be that kind of slam dunk for the story to work because Michael Douglas's character has to be painted into that corner. Like it has to appear ridiculous on his face that he would say, no, yeah. she, yeah, that he would say no. she sexually assaulted me, which there's already that there's already the issue that a, a lot of us are disinclined to believe men when they come forward about, sexual assault or sexual harassment but then for it to be like demi moore like peak demi like right. in the slinky little black dress and the push-up bra it's like dude yeah. seriously like shut the fuck up yeah, yeah 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 exactly exactly that's definitely the uh the, the whole the dilemma he's put in uh but i i'm sorry to derail this but like okay this is something related to Michael Douglas you guys kind of have to see. It is... Uh-oh. <laughs> I put okay. it in the chat. I put it in the Did chat. you know that he's gay? Oh. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> I am gay actor Michael Douglas. You heard it here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, just just watch it. I mean, it might, it, okay. might, it, might, it might irrevocably alter the course of this podcast, but I'm willing to, to do that. <laughs> you have to just watch it. I've watched it, so you guys have to watch it now. <laughs> uh, Alex just okay. dropped us a YouTube link. I don't even want to say this headline. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He looks like his dad. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. Sorry. I'm so sorry. And that was how he got oral cancer. Yeah, that's exactly. Oh. Well, you know, some men dig snails and some men really dig oysters. Yeah. Like, really, really dig them. I mean, okay. I, 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 uh, I, I, could, I could not include that in the conversation. That was that was a because that this this was a development that happened after we tried to record the episode previously. Okay, so. I'm uh, now I'm in my YouTube watch history. I am clicking the X to remove from watch history. I'm not taking any chances with my recommendations, which are already yeah. bad enough. Thanks yeah. to YouTube. But I'm so thank sorry. you, Alex, for sharing. <laughs> oh, God. And I guess, you know what? I'm, I got to put that in the show notes because you all are going to wonder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's, I'm sorry. I just had to. I just had to. I was like, because I know you, I know you're not, you're not, like, just, I know you have a kind of revulsion towards him, which I understand. He's got that kind of reptilian. Yeah, he's a lizard quality. man. Lizard. Yeah. Gordon Gecko for sure. Yeah. Like people <laughs> say that, that the elites of this country are actually lizard people, but I do think he is actually some kind of reptile. Yeah. And, but I will hand this to Michael Douglas. He is not as bad as his dad. No, 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 no. His his dad's uh, well, yeah, reportedly way way worse. Is his yeah, dad still alive, or did he die yet? No, he died finally after okay. passing one hundred, I believe. Wow. But yeah, there are some pretty bad stories about the elder Douglas. So uh, you know, I'll I'll give Michael a little bit of a mulligan on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> on that. But <laughs> like I said he, earlier in the episode, he is a perfectly fine actor. I think he does good work here. Um, as I said before, the sex scene is 
well handled and he it, is it, also it well takes handled. all the boxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um it does bring one back to a time when and we're kind of getting back to this a little more in our media. Um Tim and I have talked in the last couple episodes about how much we enjoyed uh Yoros Lathamos's uh, poor things. A movie yes. that's dealt really uh. frankly with sex and particularly female sexuality. Mm-hmm. Well, in this movie you see Demi getting finger blasted and I was like, damn, they used to do that in yeah. movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Major not motion since, pictures. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not since Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon have we had that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> A simpler time. But it was transgressive in Crash, like they did a little bit of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they were they were they weren't just fingering vaginas though. They were no, uh, fucking wounds and shit. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a very I gotta rebuy that. I have, I have an I used to have that movie on VHS way back. I have I still have to, have to rebuy it again. It was a it was a unrated video store copy. Ooh, With not, that's not, fun. Oh wow, nice. Yeah. And I think is it. A, I think I have a criterion of it. Yeah, I'm gonna go get that. Yeah, it's yeah. one of it's one of our favorite movies that we've covered on the show, just because it's so transgressive. Um, yeah. Definitely pissed a lot of people off. Uh, this movie made a hell of a lot of money. It was it, extremely successful, and um, Michael Douglas. Michael Crichton. Yeah. yeah, he he was on a hot streak, and Michael Douglas, of course, just kept on working and getting paid. Uh, I think Demi had a little bit of a hiccup in her career when she did striptease next. Yeah. Which she was paid about $12 million and then the movie flopped horribly. Yeah. It's the, it's the, yeah, exactly. That was like, that was like, that was such a big ass deal at the time. I remember. Cause it's like, Oh, she's going to be naked in a movie and she's going to get paid $12 million. And okay. Yeah. And then they see the movie. Like, great. And it's just like this yeah. completely mediocre whatever <laughs> of a movie i don't know it's been a while forever since i've seen it though so i don't know yeah i doubt it's good <laughs> yeah i'm sure it remember... looks great in it but yeah yeah i mean i i, I for, the most i remember is burt leonard burt reynolds uh, uh covered in vaseline in some scene going i could feel it in between my that toes. is the <laughs> that is the only part i remember that movie that's right <laughs> Sorry, it's just the gross shit just stands out in my head all the time, <laughs> always. Well, you know, traumatic experiences tend to stick in the mind. Right, exactly, exactly. I'm Jeez, sorry, between... I, I had to pass my trauma on to you. <laughs> right, between <laughs> Greasy Burt Reynolds and Michael Douglas eating an oyster, I I may never love again. <laughs> but you know what? It's not safe to do that kind of thing in the workplace. So no. I'm going to refrain. I hope we've all learned a big lesson from disclosure. Well, uh, it is don't deal with venture capitalists. They are amoral, reprehensible, awful, evil people and should be cast into um, Crater Lake, which is just a short drive from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, too. I've been there. Um, no, you're right. And. It's funny how th- that can be. I really feel like that's the ultimate lesson of the film because, sorry, liberal feminists, but Michael Douglas really is the wronged party <laughs> in this movie. Um, girl boss to me is really hasn't got a leg to stand on. And then <laughs> the people who... Well, yeah, the lesson is don't be a shitty person. Yeah, and the people who fucked over Tom and tried to push Meredith into a position of authority that she wasn't qualified for, just get to walk away scot-free because Donald Sutherland is still president of the company and he gets nothing but applause for once again, because of woke appointing a woman to the VP position, but this woman is postmenopausal, So it's okay for her to be in a position of power. Right. Yeah. 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 Because the, the people who own the company still, remain in charge of the companies. I mean, you know, Garvin, the, you know, the boss character, like, you know, he basically pitted two of his VPs against each other and one of them lost. And he's like, Hey, you know, whatever. That's uh, uh social Darwinism. I don't know. Sucks. Um, but yeah, it, the, uh, the movie, like I said, it, it ticks all the, the boxes of representation. I mean, there's even, you know, there's even a, uh, a lady engineer who, you know, at some point, you know, uh, Michael Douglas, you know, his his character talks to her and 
It's like, well, you know, obviously you take her side because, you know, they're both women. And she's like, of course not. Like, I work for a living. <laughs> like, I can see, you know, Meredith as the grifter she is. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it's kind of nice at the end when, you know, Meredith gets her comeuppance and they uh, promote the, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton-esque <laughs> Um, you know, a uh, woman executive. She hasn't killed you know, as many me. people as Hillary yet. No. No, no. And this one actually achieved her goal, unlike Clinton. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe that's not a great analogy. Um, uh, well, hopefully she's not like Kamala. <laughs> yeah. She can yeah, string a sentence but, you know. together. Right. Yeah. But like even the, the woman engineer is like, yeah, yeah, get fucked, Meredith. <laughs> like in the audience so like it all it doesn't return to the status quo it it bounces on a more equitable distribution i guess and where it isn't just michael douglas where he's like yeah it's an old boys club and we get to do what we want and i have a girl assistant it's like oh my boss is a woman now but not an evil one which yeah which is actually two different things yeah you might not and know. that's a thing that liberal feminism tends to miss in mm. their yeah. critique of power structures it's it's for the liberal it's good enough to just get a woman into that position it doesn't matter that she's a sociopath yeah what more women prison guards yes, yes. E exactly <laughs> yeah. and i also really like the character of the lone woman software engineer or whatever in michael douglas's mm -hmm. department because when we first see her she's in a work meeting parrying the gross comments of her coworkers, yeah. including Dennis Miller. And you get the feeling that this is a woman who has hung on in the workplace, like in spite of all the shit that gets thrown at her on a daily basis. Yeah. Like she's learned to be, yeah, she's like, yeah, you know, like what can you do it, but laugh it off? Because like these assholes are never going to change. And if you complain about it, you get canned. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's intersectional what feminism mm -hmm. where it's like, Yes, she's a woman, but she also is a worker. Yeah. You know, of a certain class. So she doesn't just like automatically side with right. the rule, like the manage managerial class because they're also, you know, a, a woman. So. Yeah. And of course, to me, is professional managerial class. Oh. Yes. For which, sure. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Scum. Yeah. Collaborator. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is funny, too, that, you know, when, the way that the whole story wraps up and that. Um, you know, Meredith is unseated. And um, the thing that we didn't discuss is that, you know, Michael Douglas is getting help from, you know, a friend yeah. <laughs> throughout this whole thing that we never see. Uh, and it turns out that that's the woman who gets the VP job and that it, you know, if, if you're, if you're just a simpleton man, like you're going to get out Fox at every corner, you know, by a, a more, um, you know, manipulative and driven woman who, can only be undone by another woman who hates her guts more than you could ever imagine. Yeah. Yes, the <laughs> the uh, the whore has been undone by the wise old crone. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we ever get a, get to like the little the what was it that guy the the other the other uh, tech, uh, tech I, I don't know engineer guy. Um, well, there's the like, there's like a junior engineer, and he like kind of rolls over because he's not in a position like to do anything. Yeah, he's in his he, early twenties. He can't say yeah. shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's how, kind of how his team gets turned against him because it's like, well, the boss said to do this, and I want to keep working here. So yeah, it's not you know sexual, but it is a power play, and it's like, well, that's shit rolls downhill. So but, um, what's he gonna do? You probably know much better than I do, Tim, because you've actually worked in the tech world. But mm -hmm. my impression is that there's actually quite a bit in this movie which is very accurate to that work environment. And I'm talking about the younger engineer with sort of like incel tendencies because the yeah, actual yeah, line of so. dialogue he has is they're stronger, they're smarter, and they don't fight fair. It's the next step in human evolution. It's like the Amazons. Keep a few of us around for sperm and kill the rest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is that guy has had a lot of opinions formed on 4chan. Absolutely. Yeah. Or hell, some, something awful for that matter. Yeah. Um, it's funny that yeah, he thinks but, that they're going to want his jizz. Yeah, exactly. He, yeah. Didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say... 
he was going to be nominated. Well, he only yeah. he only writes uh, fiction about that. Um, yeah, nice. right. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, every every character, you know, it, it is a an efficient script in that every character does represent like a point of view or a social or like a social class or a certain. You're right, right. You know, a, a gender or a race everybody's or something. Rep- so everybody's represented a little bit. Well, he he. Well, the thing about the yeah. thing about him and Dennis Miller is, I feel like they're supposed to be kind of like mouthpieces for the things that Michael Douglas's character can't actually say. Right, yeah, because then it kind of muddies the waters about like how you feel about him. Yeah, and then there's, that's a really good yeah, point. And there's also yeah, there's also a a kind of a, a Greek chorus of like another laid off tech worker that he talks mm-hmm. to oh. or is talked at on the on the ferry. Oh yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's yeah, like, that guy's yeah, just he's... spiraling, and he's just yeah. trying to enjoy the ferry ride. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Those ferry rides are nice. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I can't afford to live on Bainbridge Island, but oh, Pacific God. Northwest, very beautiful. Yeah. Yes, yeah, seriously. I mean, I, I mean, that's the one thing about movies that are set there. I mean, like, I, I don't, I. It's probably too uh, rainy for me to live there because I kind of need sunshine. But um, I, mm. I, uh, I do love the scenery in these movies. That's so always like nice to see that, even if it's like, whatever this movie is. But yes, it's just it's nice scenery. I don't. Know, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. like they got a damn nice life, and it's funny because at the beginning of the movie, uh, Tom is saying to his wife, like, "Oh, hey, you know, if I get the VP position, like, you know, the stock options are going to do their thing, and we're going to be like rich." And she's like, "Well, you know, we're already pretty rich, you know." And as they're yeah. leaving, you for have work an arts and crafts island. cabin, yeah, yeah, on the water, yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. They got a beautiful house. Their children are well nourished. Yeah. They got a. Mm-hmm. They've got a nanny well they, they take care of their kids themselves it seems like well yeah. there I mean, there is that... there is that um that lady who shows up later who's like who tells him the kids are sleeping and then he oh yeah yeah, yeah. he oh, okay. says some kind of gross shit to her because he's very mad yeah <laughs> right. like this is and i feel like this is uh boy you know these things just keep happening to defense it's really sad yeah you'd snap too after a while yeah because he does he does kind of go on this rant about how like i'm just gonna be the evil white man that you think i all am like i'm gonna fuck the nanny right now or whatever. <laughs> yeah. it's like oh. okay yeah I was like, uh, sorry i sorry like, i doubted you <laughs> pull schwarzenegger it's like that's yeah <laughs> oh yeah true 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 <laughs> Well, that was a cleaning lady or something, right? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, it didn't different. matter. Yeah. <laughs> Same difference. A hole is a hole. Fucking I mean, he was yeah. married to a Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That surely women of that family must know what to expect from like the yeah <laughs> prizes that they wed themselves to. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying she shouldn't even complain. She knew what was going to happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, hey, hey, if if Chris Pratt. Uh, cheated on Anna Ferris with you, he'll cheat on you. So, yeah, I think it's... Tim's still getting over that. I'm st- yeah, still <laughs> voice of Emmett. Why? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So uh... this has been Pratt Chat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with Tim and Jen. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, he li- he 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 came here. Uh, he came over literally into town here in Greenville, South Carolina, of all places, to visit a friend of his or something. He came to for a restaurant my friend worked at. Really? I don't know. Yeah, he was apparently very nice, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean anything. I'm sure most, I'm sure most uh, millionaire act- actors can seem nice. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'm just, well, I'm plus just he's, like a, he's like a fundy, so, you know, they always have that veneer of... Oh, oh, exactly. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah that's right. I got the spirit in me. Yeah. <laughs> and he, uh, yeah, apparently he was there to meet somebody of his who's like a local church leader or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's exactly, exactly what you, the reason he was there. Anyway, <laughs> to begin yeah, with. it's some, it's some righteous gemstones type shit. Oh, for sure. For sure. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, I, no. That, that, that show is, oh God, like, I, I, I like the, those guys are always the ones getting the south right in movies uh and tv uh because i like every other portrayal i ever see of the south is either like it's either ridiculously like it's like gone with the wind bullshit or it's, <laughs> or, or or it's like you know like or or 
or like redneck hell or something and there's like the the concept of like the what the way the modern south is the weird juxtaposition of all these different they get it mm-hmm. right they get it right i'm just gonna say yeah and you uh, can tell because they're like really passionate about like good old southern wrestling and stuff like that like, yeah. like oh these guys are like the real deal and i have no idea because like tim said i'm a coastal elite so i'm just like wow that's <laughs> that's wild um yeah uh, like seeking out a particular kind of movie rather than just seeing what's trending yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um yeah uh where were we with uh we were we we're back in the pacific northwest uh with yeah. rich people i think we're starting to describe the plot yeah um well, Tim, did you have anything in particular that you wanted to bring up about disclosure? And Alex, I would also put the same question to you, but first, Tim. Sure. Uh, <laughs> well, all of it. Um, yeah, I was, you know, really enamored with the, you know, techno utopian of the '90s. I mean, you know, the internet was taking off. We had digital video. There's something really MP3s. Something kind of poignant yeah. about it, you know that. That. Right. Yeah. This is where, like, I think people saw a lot of promise of it because, like, things that are just sort of taken for granted were developed in, you know, a fairly short time span, I want to say. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we had the iMac and the PlayStation and Pixar mm-hmm. and Google, but it was, like, usable. Mm-hmm. You know, we had Rick, Rip Mix Burn, um, DVD-Rs, uh, yeah. $5 domain names, oh, yeah. you know, you could just like post on live journal or make your own juice. So you could have your own website. You, you know, you could watch a DVD on a, on a laptop. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, you know, Cokes were 50 cents. Like the matrix was right. Like the nineties were, were peak of human civilization. <laughs> it's, yeah. It definitely seems like that more and more now. <laughs> yeah. So everything's, I don't know, been in decline since then because of the open plan office, and corporate mergers. Yeah. That's those. Those are the two biggest evils that uh, came out of the '90s. There. That is interesting. The way this this movie doesn't take place in an open office per se, but it does take place in a fishbowl, which mm-hmm. we know was a conscious decision by Barry Levinson and the production designer. Um, I believe he spoke about it in interviews that it because this is a movie all about like whisper campaigns and backstabbing and that kind of thing. Um, it's all these glassed in offices. Yeah. So was, everybody's yeah. all up in I, each other's business all the time. And you can see the direct line from that to the hellhole that is the open office of today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At, at best, someone saw that, didn't understand how uh, intrusive it is, you know, to as a work environment and thought, oh, that looks cool. Although. And we can save a couple of bucks. We are post COVID. So I don't even. Do, do people still do open offices? Do we not care anymore? Because I know we haven't cared about the pandemic in months. I don't care. I, I haven't been in an office in four years. Hell yeah, yeah bro. That's yeah, the way to do awesome. it. Remote work, baby. That was the real right, promise yeah. of disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you can't be sexual harassed if you never leave the house. <laughs> yeah, and you can talk to some guy who'll send you macadamia nuts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, with, with that guy... Uh, ha- <laughs> Our new sponsor. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Tim, you were saying... Oh, no, I was going to ask, like, uh, does, does that guy happen to go by the name Muhammad Jafar? Yeah, no, that was the other guy. That was it. So I think the I think the guy that sent him nuts was the guy that he talks to on the camera. The R, uh, Arthur Khan? Yeah, I think it? he's in, like, Austin or something. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then, which, the, the... which is, like, as we all know, is the worst place in the world. And you can tell from the way his wife reacts when he... He says that they're thinking about busting him down to the plant in in Austin. She's like, I'm not right. living there. Yeah, that's oh, but uh, no uh, income tax. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was in. I think that was back when Austin was still like kind of cool and affordable. So yeah, but whatever. Was, right. Yeah. These are yeah. these are coastal elites. Um, yeah, and then you know the Gulf Coast is a coast. Just so <laughs> well, <laughs> um, right. they're not el- truly elite, Tim. Right. But. Uh, Mohammed Jafar ends up being the the linchpin of the whole thing, and it's mm-hmm. set up way early in the movie. Yeah, he's the minority that you never see, so of course he's easy to forget about. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I did notice this the second time I watched it, which I found very funny. 
Um, Tom is hassling his wife about getting Disneyland tickets for yes. Muhammad Jafar mm-hmm. and his family. And a throwaway line that she says to him is something like, you know, you're the only person I know who like kisses up to the people below you. <laughs> and then, oh shit, at the end of the movie, like, aren't you glad that he was nice to Muhammad? Because yeah. Muhammad's able to help him out with the information he needed to prove that Demi Moore is full of shit. Yeah. So fuck you, because... wife. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, because <laughs> it all depends on having reliable backups of your data. That's another key lesson that disclosure has taught us. Yeah. You know, it's, it's three, two, one, you know, keep. Three copies, two of them off-site, and one means something else. No, two kinds of media and one of them off-site. So, <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll get you out of a scrape. You never know. That's a really good point. Who's your Mohammed Jafar audience? <laughs> uh, mine, mine is uh, this episode is brought to you by uh, Crash Plan, um, which I uh, <laughs> use for <laughs> all of my off-site backups. Tim's like, I don't know, maybe maybe people <clears throat> click on that instead of the sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but, uh, Alex, did you have anything else that you wanted to highlight about Disclosure? Um, I think we've covered most of it. I mean, we could go into like, oh, that hairstyle looks goofy or that, you know. <laughs> Michael Douglas and his <laughs> Paul McCartney ass hair. Yeah, or 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 that or that or that thing is oh how hilariously out of date that is. But I mean, it's yeah, it's we we pretty much covered the interesting parts of the movie. I guess uh, just re- to reiterate, uh, back up your files. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The important lesson that I had to learn <laughs> last time we tried to record this episode. Oof. Oh, yeah, the yeah. irony! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a that's that's a perfect ending right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i i like to record more but my os has been uh compromised by by hackers and it's all now encrypted and i have to pay them a bitcoin ransom <laughs> <laughs> tim this keeps happening <laughs> i look i click on a lot of links i don't bother to say where they go <laughs> thanks for listening If you enjoyed this episode, you can get two extra episodes every month, plus access to our growing catalog of reviews for just $5 a month by going to patreon.com and searching for, have you seen this? So so, someone sends me an email, I open it. What am I going to (laughs) do? Yeah, it might be from so, a friend, Wink. Yeah. It says it says underage Demi Moore nude. And then I click on it and go, oh, oh god. <laughs>